Welcome Dr. Marian Morkel to the ASISA Academy. Thank you so much for presenting on, on the Underwriters Programme earlier today. Uh, we just want to capture very briefly now for the underwriters out there who are watching uh, the, the top three things in your view of the disorders regarding the reproductive system. Okay, thank you Dennis. I think the most important thing to remember when underwriting the reproductive system is that there's large social stigmas attached to it. So for the most part, most people want to declare everything about disorders in the reproductive system for fear of ridicule by the intermediary or for fear of ridicule by insurance company. Uh, while you can give every assurance about confidentiality, talking about sexual dysfunction or previous sexually transmitted infection causes far too much embarrassment for them to fear some legal repercussion for this. And luckily for us, most disorders in the reproductive system don't really carry a significant increased risk in mortality or in profound disability. Uh, the only large category that does carry an increased risk in mortality is that of cancers within this reproductive system. And with regard to cancers in the reproductive system, this is probably the arena where most of the research has been pulled into cancers. Um, and so there's a lot of screening tests available for both female reproductive um, cancers as well as male reproductive cancers. The good news as a result of that is that it's usually early detected. So usually they are treated in the early stages and they often have um, curable um, recoveries after five years. So at underwriting stage, there's usually very favorable rates for these reproductive are of very few that have a poor outcome. I uh, can think of penile cancers, uh, but luckily for us that is extremely rare. Um, so the reproductive system disorders, we're probably only going to know half of the story always, but since it doesn't carry a large risk in mortality or in disability, we're quite happy with that. 